So for those of you that are new um, joining us, we are reading the books of New Testament for this year. And we are in a series right now called How, um, How Do We Live? And in this series, we are going through all the letters that Paul wrote in the New Testament. We're going through them and we are picking out nuggets that we can apply in our lives right now um, to live and um, demonstrate what it looks like to be Christ. So my assignment for this evening is the letter of 1 Thessalonians. And so um, to give you a little bit background, a little bit, little bit information, um, in the New Testament times, the region that is called Greece was, had two provinces, Macedonia and Achaia. So Macedonia is in the north, Achaia is in the south. And then in Macedonia, there are two prominent cities, which is Thessalonica and Phil, uh, Philippi. In the south is Athens and Corinth. And Paul spent a lot of time in Greece. As a matter of fact, if you look through your Bible, you will see that he actually wrote two letters to um, people living in um, Thessalonica, the believers there. He wrote one letter to believers in Philippi. He wrote two letters to believers in Corinth. So we are going to dive in in the first letter. Uh, uh, many scholars truly believe that this first letter to the believers in Thessalonica is the earliest letter that was preserved. So I find that very interesting and I hope you do as well. So I just want to give you that little background before we um, jump into this. So we are reading through the Bible. I'm just going to give you an overview of this letter. So there are five chapters in this letter. The first one uh, is Paul um, stating that this letter is coming from him, Timothy, and Silas. And he is writing, being grateful that they are holding on to their faith. Very grateful to hear that their faith um, is being um, spread out even beyond their region that people are talking about them and how they're holding on to their faith despite persecution that they are receiving. And in chapter two, he kind of does this reminiscing thing. He goes back to say, hey, you know, when we came, we were having a lot of trouble in Philippi, but by the grace of God, we decide to go ahead and preach, um, preach the gospel to you. And I don't know about you, but I can understand what he is saying at this point because there's something about you doing something for God and you, I mean, with a pure motive and people are rejecting it, people are coming against you. And instead of falling um, into this despair, they decide, okay, let's go to this other region and let's preach the gospel there. And he said, by the grace of God that they did. And to their delight, the people in Mes uh, Mes Mesalonica um, received this message with joy, knowing full well that they would be persecuted. Um, and that just blew them away. And he is so grateful to them for that. And he goes to chapter three where he says, Okay, they're in Athens, south part of Greece. And he's like, and obviously at this time, he's hearing all the persecutions that's going on. And he tried to come and visit them, but he says Satan prevented him to come. So he couldn't take it anymore. He sends Timothy, he's like, listen, go try to strengthen them, go try to encourage them, make sure they don't sh um, fall off their faith, that they don't question their faith. But to their surprise, um, they were still staying faithful. They're still holding on to their faith, full of joy, can't wait to see Paul. And it's interesting, like here he is worried about them, sends Timothy to encourage them, only for them to encourage them instead. It becomes a reversal thing. And he's like, listen, we're in Athens and we were encouraged that you guys are still holding on to your faith, even in the midst of persecution. And listen, he even says in that same chapter that when we preach the gospel, we did tell you that trouble will come. But we are so grateful to see that even in spite of trouble, you still hold on to your faith. So that was wonderful. And then he goes to chapter four where he starts to, um, I guess, um, real, 
re-illuminate re 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 some of the teachings that he um, was teaching them there, which is to stay sexually pure, stay away from sexual immortality, and also um, to love one another, to be kind to one another. And then he goes in to talk about um, the hope for resurrection. So a lot of persecution was happening, people of faith were being killed. And he said, listen, I just wanted to let you know that those that died in this, that they will actually meet Jesus when he comes back the second time. They will be the first to meet Jesus before those of us who are still living. So like to hold on to hope that that death is not for naught, there's a purpose for it, and they will meet Jesus first before those of us living will meet him. And then he goes into chapter 5 where he then says, listen, we don't even know when Jesus is going to come. I'm just going to be honest with you. We don't know. Um, we just know it whenever it is, it's going to be shocking. Nobody's going to expect it. And he's saying for those of us that call ourselves Christians to make sure that we stay alert, that we are um, clear-headed, and that we make sure that we stand on guard protected by the armor of faith and love, we're in the helmet of our salvation. Just to stay alert, stay on guard, and be clear-headed about this thing. And to, you know, continue to love each other, to honor and respect the spiritual leaders amongst them. And he goes on through this, and now our passage is going to come at the end of chapter 5. So there's going to be two verses that we are going to talk about here. So um, open your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to do verses 23 to 24. Okay, so it's just two verses. I'm going to read from the um, New Living Translation, but whatever translation you have, just follow, follow me. So it reads... Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen for he who calls you is faithful. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for this gathering. We are so grateful that you are sitting in our midst. Lord, speak through me, use my heart, my soul, my thoughts, my voice to speak to us today, Lord. We are thanking you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, there are questions um, that we are going to dive into. Now, I'm not going to dive into all of the questions due to time. This is something you would do in your digital neighborhoods. And if you're just tuning in for the first time and you're not part of a digital neighborhood, that's okay. You're going, there's someone right in the comments that will interact with you. So don't fret, okay? Um, but I don't have time to go through all the questions, but I will um, dig into the first question, which is, what stood out to you? So reading these two verses, this is what stood out to me. It says, now may the God of peace make you holy in every way. May the God of peace make you holy. If you have the NIV, it actually says, may the God of peace sanctify you through and through. And I love that it is God that's going to make us holy. Not us making ourselves holy or us making other people holy. Why? Because we don't know nothing about being holy, okay? God is holy. He knows what holy is. He knows what holy looks like. And here in scripture is saying that he is the one that's gonna make us holy because we have no idea what holy is because we are fallen beings. We're fallen beings. So he's gonna teach us. So we have no right to try to make someone holy and trust me, we can't make ourselves holy either. So I love how he says that God of peace makes us holy. And in that in itself, I looked at the word make. Now, I'm a cook, all right? I bake a little, but the baking I do is basically baking chicken, okay? My second daughter, Onyinye, she's a baker of the family. I mean, the girl can bake, all right? But one thing I noticed about cooking and baking is they have something in common, heat. Heat 
has to be applied. And for Paul to write here, the God of peace. <laughs> Makes me think, okay, God making us, that there's some heat that will be applied in this making. And for us to remember, he is the God of peace that's doing this thing. You know what I mean? He is not vengeful. He is not evil. He is the God of peace. And he's applying heat. And for those of you that cook or bake, you know there's certain temperatures that we apply depending on what we're cooking and at what time we're cooking it, right? Um, and you apply the heat accordingly. If you do it too high, you burn the thing real quick. If you do it too low, it takes forever in a day. And it will not cook well So or bake well. So there's a certain temperature. And God knows the temperature to put in your, in your life. So my question to you is, what part of your life are you feeling a little bit of heat? What part of your life are you feeling a little stirring? What part of your life you feel like God is putting a little ingredients here? Like maybe a little, you need a little peace here, a little, a little understanding here, you might need a little wisdom here. What part of your life you feel like God is testing you? God stirs and then he tasted to see if he tastes some holiness in you. Tasting to see if he sees the image of his son Jesus in you. What part of your life is he, is he testing? And this is honestly a, a challenge for me. And as you keep reading, it says, and make your whole spirit and soul and body. So the whole of you. God doesn't just pick just one area. He is so interested on in all parts of us. So granted, our God is a gentleman. He's not going to force himself in you. You have to open up and allow him in different areas. But the thing about God is, though, is there are some areas probably you've been hesitant to touch or maybe, honestly, you were not even aware of. And then he applies a little hit to that area. And just watch your response. Do you come to him? Do you get frustrated? Or does your faith waver like Paul was worried about, about the Thessalonian church? Is your faith wavering at this time? Because there's some heat, there's some trouble in some parts of your area, or if maybe all parts, I don't know. But this is something for us to pay attention to. I remember um, last year, I honestly was getting frustrated as a preacher, okay? So much so that I <laughs> came to the conclusion that, you know what, I'm not even called to preach. Let me just be okay with that, and I'm fine. It is fine. I don't have to preach. I thought God called me to preach, but I obviously got that wrong, so I'm okay with that. Well, you know, God, of course, still applying heat. I was still uncomfortable. And I find myself, after going through a lot of frustration and anger and just wand and wandering, wavering in my faith, did God really call me? Am I just assuming? You know, all this is just questioning. I came to a point where I was just like, okay, Lord, if you called me to be a preacher, teach me, make me. I don't know why I've never asked him that in the first place. I don't even know why that. I, I mean, I just assumed, okay, call me to preach. All right, let's go. And I'm just winging it however I think. I should wing it, watch a lot of preachers that thought, okay, I can do this or I can do that. But then I found that none of those were authentic to who I am. So I was getting frustrated. And finally, I went to him and said, teach me. If you truly called me, teach me. And I had to surrender to that. And I'm wondering for you, maybe right now <laughs> you're struggling in your marriage. Have you gone to God and say, Lord, teach me how to be a husband? Or teach me how to be a wife. Maybe you're strong with your children. Lord, teach me how to be a mom or how to be a dad to this child. Um, teach me. Show me. Maybe right now you are struggling with your faith right now. 
You know what I mean? Like, you're having issues. Either something's going on financially with your job or at home, whatever it might be, and you really are struggling. How about you go to God? Teach me how to walk in love. I don't know how to do that. Like, go to him, ask him to make you. And let me tell you something. Making is a process. Don't expect it to be a quick fix. You have to stay alert and pay attention to what God is nudging in your life, show, letting you see what he's revealing in your life. It's a process. Don't expect it to be right then and there, an instant thing. It's a process. So be patient with yourself. Give yourself some grace. Let the Holy Ghost do his thing. Your job is honestly to believe him. Look at him and say, Lord, you know what? You're right. Even though I don't know how you're right, I don't think I have this issue. I don't think this is the problem. But you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and believe you and let you teach me about this issue or about this situation or deliver me from this or heal me from that. What areas he's touched? Is he touching your spiritual self? Is he touching your soul self? Is he touching your, your body? Let him do so. So for those of you who are tuning in uh, and not in your digital neighborhoods, there are more questions um, I would love for you to um, answer. So the first one, of course, is what stood out to you? Put that in the comments. Read, meditate, and find out what is it that stood out to you. Second question is what questions do you have? What questions do you have? Put that down. Let us know. Third question, what might God be saying? What might he be, he be saying? And then the fourth one is, what is God making in you in this season? For those of you that will be going into your digital neighborhoods, um, I would love for you to absolutely go ahead and do that. And, and have that conversation with people in your neighborhood. So let us um, pray and close this out. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, we are asking that you speak to us today in this moment. Um, reveal to us what you are doing in our lives and also give us the strength and the courage to step up to it um, and do the hard work necessary so that your image it is carved wonderfully in our lives this is our prayer in Jesus name